the person start dying. Why do you go to school? You want to keep growing your mind. And even when you enter retirement, you find something else to do. Some at the end of 80, they are back in school. Not because they need a certificate. There is a man far away in the country we may all know who has been a military president or military head of state as they call them then, then two-time president. He came out of presidency and went to the university and studied masters and studied PhD. At 80, he graduated and the question is, you've got to the height of where everybody aspires to be. You don't need it, you're already an ex-president. You are well known everywhere. But yes, it does. It needs to keep growing. There's a point where your body begins to age, but your mind must not stop growing. But to God, it's not only your body that must grow, it's not only your mind that must grow, the most important thing to God is the growth of your spirit. Keep moving. Don't stop. Don't look back. Remember, lost why. Also in the spirit, we were born as a child of God by the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. We call it born again. Being born again. Can I pause a little bit? That is the starting point of making heaven. Nobody will make heaven through any other means. There is no other name that is given to man by which we may be saved or can be saved. For God so loved this world, John 3, 16, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Salvation is the door to eternity. Religion will lead people to hellfire. Christian religion will not take you to heaven. Hindu's religion will not take you to heaven. Islam religion will not take you to heaven. You see, I started with Christianity. No religion will take you to heaven. Because religion is a man-made way of trying to reach the unknown God. The God you don't know, you only know he stays in heaven. And you are trying to human meet you to reach him. It almost fell. So God created a means to reach man by bringing his son to the world and said, die on the cross for their sins. And as a result of accepting him, a free gift of God that cost him his life. We always see salvation as free, but it took somebody else's life. Christ has a father. At least we know his natural father and his mother on earth, and he has the heavenly father. And the friends and the relatives and the well wishers that saw him killed. Nobody won their children there. It was a high price. The greatest price to be paid. A start with salvation. Let's refer to the Bible. Acts chapter 4, verse 42. Acts chapter 4, verse 42. Acts chapter 4, verse 42. Let's see what the Bible says. Acts chapter 4, glory to God. Acts chapter 4, verse 42. Acts 4, I read verse 42. Acts chapter 4, are you there? Verse 42. Christianity is not the way to heaven. Christ is the way to heaven. Acts chapter 4. Forgive me. 2 Timothy 1 9. 2 Timothy 1 9. 2 Timothy chapter 1. And I want to read the Verse 9, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Salvation starts through the cross. By the Lord and Jesus Christ. Go with me in the can. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I want to read verse 22. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I want to read verse 22. 1 Corinthians 
15, and I read verse 22. 22, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 22. For which cause also I have been much hindered from coming to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22. Please let me pass it down. Romans 5, 7. Romans chapter 5, verse 20. Romans. Romans chapter 5, verse 7. Romans chapter 5, verse 7 to 8. Romans 5, verse 7 to 8. Romans 5, verse 7 to 8. For scarcely for a righteous man we won't die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I will turn back to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 22. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 22. That place said, uh, where we just read, uh, while we are yet sinners, uh, Christ died for us, is starting point. Now, when you look at verse 22 of 1 Corinthians 15, it said, For us in Adam all die. Even so, in Christ shall all be made alive. We come into a new life by salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the starting point of my journey and your journey as a believer. And on that starting point, the moment a child is born, that child must keep moving. That child must not stop. That child must not look back. Remember, Lord's why. God wants us to keep moving and not to stop. He wants us not to look back as the Lord's wife did. Are you saying that? Have you accepted Jesus as your personal savior? There is a new level that God wants you to move on into. Let us look at Lord's wife for a few minutes. Lord's wife. When I began to research, I realized the Bible was, you know, so straight, you know, stating what I would have even mentioned in the name of this woman. But research showed us that his name is called Ado or Edit. So this is Mrs. Ado Lot or Mrs. Edit Lot. We want to speak a bit about this lady. Luke chapter 17, Luke chapter 17, 28 to 32. Luke 17, 28 to 32. Let's hear what Jesus said about Lot's wife. Luke 17, verse 28 to 32. And I read. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, here Christ is telling us the events that will occur in this end time, and he sticks something as a warning. Remember Lot's wife. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even then shall it be in the days when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and the stars in the house, let him not come down to take it away. He that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. And he ended with verse 32. Remember Lord's wife. We were reminded of Lord's wife in Genesis 19, 17, 25, 26. Lord's wife looked back from behind her husband. I don't know why the Holy Spirit kept hammering that wall. Lord's wife looked back from behind her a husband, man in the house, anywhere you are hearing me, if you always put your wife behind you, there is that danger of the enemy capturing them. Hear me what happened in the Garden of Eden. Adam was right in the forefront of assignment, but he left his wife behind. You need to be carrying yourself along. Don't just believe they are okay. 
Don't be left there fine. Don't just say I'm the head of the home. You have a reason why God placed you there as the head to carry everybody along. Only God knows what has been going on in that marriage for a while. When I contrasted with the marriage of Abraham and, and Sarah, I saw a total different dimension. Abraham carried his wife along. They were a team. Even though they are no children for many years, there was no difference between them. They were that close. They relate together. They were on the same wavelength. The man was always there to ensure he can read the mood of his wife and be sick of the word of God and carry her along. Hear me? I know my wife too well now for the past 20 something years. I think she's not talking. I think I can tell why. And immediately I said, What happened? She said, Nothing. I know there's nothing, but what's the issue? Nothing. I will not let go until I get to what happened. And most time I'm never wrong. And when I realize I can't get to the issue because sometimes it's nothing to do with me. But that was it me. No. Is it the children? No. I know it's personal. So I will leave her. But I didn't leave her. I go on my news. Anywhere I start talking to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, that's your daughter. I don't know what she's going through. But she couldn't be left alone going through it. If she can all open up to me, you are right in there, you see what the situation is. Fix it. And before long, things will change. And later she will come. I was just thinking about this. There was way me that but the Holy Spirit just spoke to me. Carrying along. Lord was too busy with whatever he was busy doing. He left his wife in the state that she was. Oh, she thought the wife was a Christian. The wife is moving along, but the enemy was fixing her on carnality, on things that would perish. No wonder when it was time to move, she looked back into what she left behind. Records show that she had a lot of heavy possession, gold, silver. There was no enough time for her to prepare to carry those things along. It was so sudden, hear me? The day when Christ will come will be so sudden that things you are not secret away from will hold you down. The anger you refuse to let go will hold you down. The worries you refuse to let go will hold you down. The unforgiveness you refuse to let go will hold you down. The job you make priority above God will hold you down. Excuse me, can I be truthful to you? This woman was called, the Bible says, the angel held the head of the husband and held the head of the wife, and together they were meant to be rescued. The plan of God was the only soul must be saved. God knew that even the Lord was saved, the journey will not be parted for many years to come. And of course, that was the case. It got to a point that most children committed incest. As if there were no other children or any other men in the society with their father. That couldn't have happened if the wife came along. The Bible says the man was running for his life. Excuse me, in those days, men too have run their moves. Have you forgotten? He went with Abraham for a very long time. And he got to a point, the Bible says, the household of Lot was in prison. Just like Abraham was in prison. They have everything, and there was a quarrel. Because they have too much. And Abraham called his brother. He said, look, let's separate. The land is ahead of you. Pick whatever so that there wouldn't be any further conflict between us. He picked the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. So he was also rich. But when it came to time to run for his life, he's ready to let go. But his wife was standing still. They now want to move forward. The wife was looking backward. And God is saying, keep moving. Don't stop. Remember Lord's why. May the Lord help us to keep moving in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. The question we need to ask ourselves. Here is, I said note, note, looking back to the past, looking back to the past, it's not allowed. It's like looking back into Sodom. I want to first start in that coming in of spiritual dimension, and I will tie it down with all that thing the Holy Spirit on my mind. Note, we were called out of a sinful world by salvation through Christ. Jesus Christ. We must not look back or continue, but continue progressively to move forward. Here it is. Forward into what and how. And this is very important. 
Once I am saved, we become a child of God. John chapter 1, verse 12 to 13. John chapter 1, verse 12 to 13. We have all confessed Christ. Yes, we are saved. But the journey doesn't end there. There is more to do. Here it is, verse 12 to 13. But as many as received him, to them gave him power to become. On the land that in your Bible that we can, it's a process to become the Son of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Once I am saved, God said, don't stop there. All what happened at that stage is like a mother that going to the labor world and brought forth a child. That child has not been detached from the mother. There are parts the child must play to continue to grow. You have been detached by salvation into the kingdom of God from the kingdom of darkness. He that called us from the power of darkness into the marvelous light of a son. From that moment, the work began. Look at verse 13. Which were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of a father. The Bible calls it man. Not of the will of the man, but of God. So as salvation, I got a new spiritual day of birth. I become part of God's family. But that is not the ending in itself. The church is filled with children of God. But when are we going to keep moving into the higher calling of becoming sons of God? Open your Bible with me if you can. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. 1 John chapter 3, and I read verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knoweth it not. We are prepared, ordained to grow from children of God into becoming the sons of God, a stage of maturity. As children of God, we love milk of the world. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2. How do I know if I'm still a child and I'm not yet growing? You will always enjoy the milk of the world. There are bones in the world. There are meats in the world. The meats of the world will need energy to shoot them. But the world that carries you on, that motivates you, that makes you go to God and go to pray and go to church is the meat. You are still a child. God said, move to the next level. You say, I notice that when you praise children, they love it. Their teeth come out, they smile. But when you give them correction, the face change. And I always draw my little dad's eyes. Why is it your face is changing? I'm not, I'm not telling you off. I'm only advising you. He said, Dad, I'm okay. I said, I know you're okay, but I can read your mood. It has changed. But there is a point when you become an adult. You even go to people that will tell you the truth because there's nothing to do with them. They're just trying to help you. I tell people, look, my time is my time. If I have to use it on you, if you don't value it, I will use it again. I have all the things I need to do with it. Maturity allows us to take the correction. You look for the area in the world of God as well as for the video that is not just about blessing. It's about rebuke. It's about instruction. It's about getting to know God better. It's about sacrificial life. It's about saying, God, I'm not going to be more righteous. No, I'm not going to do it the way you want me to do it. Excuse me, it's not about pumping all the time. Hey, listen to me. God did not pump out the disciple, even to the point of death, but they grow unto maturity. If all what you still enjoy is the meek of the word of God and the blessings in the Bible, and that's the one you like. Some people love reading the book of Psalm. Oh, they enjoy Psalm. And they will read the Psalm that deal with their enemy. The Psalm where God promise. Some when they pray from beginning to the end, all their quotation will be the promises, promises, promises. And sometimes the way we quote the promise will make God look stupid. That all believers will look at God and say, if you can give it to all these sinners, I'm equally qualified. Condition is attached. Every prophetic word God gave to you, there are conditions. 
If you don't reach them, you may not get them. There was a, a, a sister um, connected with me on Facebook. A man of God now gave a prophetic word. The moment they gave the prophetic word, come and see the quick response. I grab it in Jesus' name. And she was grabbing it. And the Holy Spirit spoke in my heart. And I responded. I said, my sister, thank you for the claim of getting it for the work. Whatever God draw at you is not free. You will pay the price to be able to maintain and to keep it. Your character, your integrity will be tested. You say it's not by maker. Go and read the book of Psalm. The Bible spoke about Joseph. He said the word of God tested him until the word of the king came to set it free. The same word that was sent to him as prophetic word. How to put Joseph through a lot of tests. And if you refuse to pass, there's an automatic proportion. Devil will give you blessings that have their soul. But God doesn't give blessings that have sorrow. And why there are no sorrows in God's blessings is because He will not refine you, qualify you for whatever He released to you. So you will enjoy it till last because there's no loopholes in the blessings of God. Let's look at who are the babies. First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. And I want to read verse 2. First Peter chapter 2. I want to read verse 2. As new babies, verse 2, so there are new babies in Christian law. As new babies, this is how you know them. The desire, the sincere milk of the world. And he said the reason here, he said that ye may grow. The topic we have today is let us remember God's wine. And God is encouraging you and I. Keep moving. Don't stop. Don't look back. Remember lost words. So there is a need for growth. So if salvation is the end of it, heaven will not be talking to me about growth. It is easy to be born. Only the one that paid the price. But to grow, you have to be part of it. There is an assignment that God has for you. Your spirit man needs to grow. Growth. Moving on. May the Lord help us in the name of the Lord Jesus. You can write this down because of time. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2 spoke about new babies, children. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 13 spoke about a stage of newborn and spiritual newborn and children of God. Now we were called to move up to sonship. Now another question you and I will ask is how? Romans chapter 8, verse 14 started it for us. Romans chapter 8. Verse 14. Go there with me. Some of us can read it off at Romans chapter 8, verse 14. And this is what he said. Romans 8, verse 14. Romans 8, verse 14. For as many, for as many, remember it's not talking about unbelievers here. This is not talking about people that are just church goers. This is not talking to people that are just church members. This is not talking of people that have titles, but they have not really come through salvation route. For as many, I read again, as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. What does that mean? As I got saved as a child of God, and God handed me over into the hand of the Holy Spirit to start living me. The moment I begin to be led by the Holy Spirit, the process of sonship starts. Once you have been led by the Holy Spirit, it doesn't matter the stage you are, you are climbing from a child into sonship. It's a process. You keep going. And we keep on learning from the Holy Spirit, becoming more like Christ until one day shall come. As many that are being led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So be led by the great teacher himself that will teach you all. The Holy Spirit, when Christ was here, he was with them for three and a half years. I doubt if Christ ever had time to rest. Daytime is out there preaching to the multitude. When he moved away from the multitude is with his disciple interpreting and explaining the parable to them. 
When it's time to go to bed, he said, you guys go and sleep. He's already in the desert, let's do what, alone, praying all night. And that was a cycle for three and a half years. He don't talk to the disciple one day. He said, listen, I got many things I still want to teach you. Even though he told Peter and the disciple, you are cleansed by the word I spoke to you. He said, but even though I've spoken to you, there are still more I need to tell you. Unfortunately, you have no container to receive them. I have more to give. So there is more from God. The progression must not stop. The day you get to a point in your Christian life and you say you arrive as the day you die. The Bible said it was a time when kings are made to be at battlefront. David climbed to the top of the house and he was resting. And right below there was his death warrant. If not for the grace of God in the life of David, David would have fallen the way so far. Looking into the house of Uriah, seeing a woman that doesn't belong to him, if he has been in the battlefront, that will not have happened. Hear what Jesus said. There are many things I want to teach you, but you can't take them. But when he shall come, who is he? The teacher himself, and he will teach you all things. Let's bring it to the natural. Parents, what do you do the moment you give back to your children from day one? Right in the hospital. They start putting your child through training of how we do things here. The very first thing they did while I was there, after they brought my son or daughter and they gave them to me, uh, I'm the privileged one to first carry the baby. They will give me the bottle of water. They said, give them the food, let them know how we drink or we eat on surface of the earth. So I will put the feeding bottle in their mouth. And you say, mm -hmm. you know, there is that inconsistency in the way they think. But over years, they understood that here, there are way things are done. When they are inside the womb, they eat whatever they wanted. But here is not, no more connectivity to. They have to respond, they have to communicate. I remember any time the baby is crying, my wife is saying, oh, they are hungry. Said, How do you know? Said, I can tell. Gradually, we begin to potty train them. We take them, we we'll take them to the toilet and say, do your poo here, do your poo here. Those are training. As their body was growing, training was coming. At the point you begin to give them nice discipline that will cut the excesses, or else your child will carry a poo poo full of poo and pour it in your sitting room. You begin to train them. There's a level you say, okay, I think I can now hand you over to a third party to train you. Because when you're born a child, it's not only you that will raise the child. You take the child to nursery. And in nursery, another mother, another father will begin to look after your child giving them a broader understanding of the society. Before you know they are in primary school. Before you know they finish primary six. Then they go to secondary school. Then they progress. And everybody begins to bombard them with discipline. And the child comes back home and says, there was a child in our school today that talked about the enemy and you question the child, you don't behave like that. I did not raise you up. You are giving them training. And one day that child that at a point in their early life was putting salt dust and dust on their head, now become a medical doctor, well dressed, an authority in the society. They have grown. They've gone through every level of growth to become an authority and an asset. God said, that's what I want you to be. That is where Adam and Eve failed God. They were created to take position, but because they refused to grow, they were going back, listening to the messages of lies and deception of the enemy, the most regarding of authority. Because I want you to occupy the post. You are born of God. The seed of God is in you, but the Holy Spirit must grow you. How familiar are you with the Holy Spirit? If I ask who is the Holy Spirit to you, some Christians, the best they can say is, Holy Spirit is my friend. How? Holy Spirit help me to sleep and wake up. Really? Is that all? What about Holy Spirit being the teacher? Do you know that the relationship of children and parents is different to the relationship of students and their teacher? Let me open it up. My daughter is always the one I use because she's the one on the stage. She's talking to me and dad as if we're, we're evil. 
When we bring an idea, my daughter too will bring an idea, which is fine, I like it. But after I've assessed the idea, I said, this is what I want you to do. Mommy said, this is what you must do. He said, but well, what about if we do it this way? And one day I told my daughter, I said, listen, the teachers in your school, how old are they? Are they so old like me? Do they have gray hair? I said, when they tell you this is what they want you to do, what do you do? She laughed. I said, you say, yes, no. But when we got here, no, no. We can't do that without it because science told me this. Holy Spirit is a teacher. Don't be too familiar with him. Is your helper? Yes. Is your friend? Yes. Is he to assist you? Yes. The Bible said he will be with you forever. But always understand the main reason why he was brought to this world. Is to teach all things. What is teaching? Discipline. To instill God's fear in my heart. I must not be too familiar with the Holy Spirit. If you ask me to pick my Bible, pick it. Don't give excuses. I, I want to watch a TV. I am too busy. I, can, I will do it later. You have just abused the teacher. We must grow because this world is passing away. And everything in this world growing. I wish there was more time. Move forward unto sonship. Romans chapter 8, verse 14 has spoken to us. As we move on with the Holy Spirit, as we move on with the Holy Spirit, take note of this. How does the Holy Spirit move you and I forward? He lead us. If I'm not being led by the Holy Spirit, let me tell you who is in control. You could be saved and still allow the control of the spirit of the air to garnish your life. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2. It said the spirit of the air that controls the hearts of the children of disobedient control. It has nothing to do with I am saved. If you are living a life of disobedience to God's word, God's will, to the Holy Spirit, this spirit of the have a right to control you. The Bible says, whoever we release our life to, we submit our set to the servant of the slave of that person we are. So many Christians who are still children, who are not led by the Holy Spirit, can be controlled by the Spirit of the air. They can use anger to control you. Oh, you speak in tongues, but anger has not left. That anger needs to be tamed. Oh, you speak in tongues, but you have the eyes of adultery and fornication. It is a control remote control from above. You speak in tongues, but you still keep malice. It is a remote control from the above. Why? Because you choose to live in disobedience. If I allow iniquity in my heart, I will say, God will not hear me. And he's talking of a believer. Holy Spirit does not control us. He leads us. Holy Spirit wants to lead us. We move up. We move up onto more faith. Now I'm looking into what does it lead us into? It moves us more into more faith, which is a fruit produced by the Holy Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. We will see it as clear as it can be. But the fruit of the Spirit is it started with love. And as we begin to read on, you get to a point. It's the faith. Faith. Why did I specifically mention faith? We will get there. Fruit of faith coming out. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. The Holy Spirit grow the fruit of faith in us. And more faith that we require keep coming out. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Romans 10, 17. Romans 10, 17. It says, so then faith coming by now. By hearing and hearing the word of God. So as I begin to move on with my Christian life, the Holy Spirit will divert my attention from the world of sins. The Holy Spirit will divert my attention from listening to cultural words, traditional words. It will stop me from listening to the word of the society. I find myself, some of such words said it. If you are in Rome, you behave like Romans. No, you don't have to be an actor. God wants us to be real. Holy Spirit will begin to incorporate the word of God in our heart. And as we begin to read the word of God, 
meditating, the word of God, faith gets generated. That is what God told Joshua. Joshua, there are areas where Moses made success, but there are many areas of his failure. It was him I prepared to lead the people into the land of Kenya, but he won't get there. Why? That is the reason I call upon you, Joshua 1 8. He said, This book of the law must not depart from you. It must not come from you, the company now. In nature, you must meditate, but day and night, the success and prosperity is a guarantee. As you meditate on the word of God, as you spend time by the help of the Holy Spirit to treasure the word in your heart, growth and soul. As a result of hearing the word, hear it, faith come. And when the Bible says faith come, faith do go. And how does faith go? When I read my Bible, it says, take the sword of faith. So when you are using something, it may deplete. So you need to replenish it back. Faith is a sword, it's also a shield. Over years of time, when you are using something over and over, wear and tear setting. So God expects you to always replenish. You buy food into your house. You don't say, this is the food I bought for the past 40 years, and that is the same food I'm still eating, except it's the manna. Even manna, there is a level to how far they can keep it. It will tell them, take enough for the day, because there's going to be new ones tomorrow. So when the Bible says, faith cometh, it keeps coming. If there is no need for replenishment, the Bible will not say it counts. Faith cometh by hearing. Look at that word hearing. It's not a one or it's a continuous. A continuous text. Keep hearing the word of God. But be careful what you hear. Ensure it is the undiluted word of God. Not just me at this level. You've been a Christian for 10 years. You don't know you're left to your right in the Bible in the word of God. Grow. Keep moving. Here it is. If you don't move, they will meet up with you. If you don't move, worldliness will catch up with you. If you don't move, they will arrest you down one day. Hear what the Bible says. It says, the summer but vigilant, for the adversary of the devil, like a roaring lion, is moving, walking around, seeking who to the wall. But if you keep moving with the Holy Spirit, if you've been led, the prayer will come to pass. Do not lead us into temptation. He won't dare try to lead you into temptation because the Spirit of God deliver us from all evil. Let there be more faith. And it's on this level I am going to be rounding on. More faith. More faith. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing the word of God. If we must keep moving, if we must keep walking, you must spend time in the world. Don't read the word of God for leisure. It is not a newspaper. I know there are beautiful stories in there that sometimes when you read it, you enjoy it. But remember, your life depends on what you are reading. You must read it like a student that wants to make a start. There's a difference between a student that is serious, reading their book, and the one that's just playing and wasting away time. The Bible is your destiny. The enemy will try everything possible to stop you from reading. Take time as the Holy Spirit to enable you, because by flesh and your energy, you can do it. We have so much adversary that we can see with the naked eyes that want to ensure we don't make it true. But as we rely on the Holy Spirit, every day I talk, and when I'm talking to you, I'm hearing you think I'm sick. No, I am not. I am talking to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, please help me. I know I don't have the strength. I don't qualify. Salvation came by grace. Let the grace carry me on. But you, you must really enjoy grace. Obedience must not be found wanting. Grace with absence of obedience will not stay. God has grace to you. And apart from giving you Christ, He gave you the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit has a part to play. As you take the time to study the world, not only when it's convenient, study it when it is inconvenient. Let it be a sacrifice. Because whatever you don't sacrifice for does not pay you in the long run. Every good thing you ever got or I got in life that will say, this is good. Do you know how you got it? You spend your money on it. You sacrifice your life to get them. Your money is part of your life. You gave it up and they gave you that car. You gave your money, they gave you that house. And as a result of that, you can say, that is my possession. You care for it because it costs you something. Let reading the Bible cost you. Let it cost you your time. Don't look for available time after you have done the busy thing and say, now I can deal with the Bible.
Bible. Some people, when they are about to read the Bible, they have made up their mind. God has every source of time. I will study your word. That is when calls will come. Your best friend will call you. Tell them I'll call you back. Shut your phone down. Study your Bible. Your destiny depends on it. Because faith comes by hearing. Faith do a lot of things. Time is gone. By the glory of God, if we're still here, rapture has not happened. I will continue this teaching next week. But quickly, let me run down with this. What does faith do? Why are you emphasizing on this issue of faith, man of God? Because faith remains healing unto you. The book of Acts chapter 14, verse 19, and verse 9 and 10 told us that. Faith remains healing. Emotional healing. Spiritual healing. Physical healing. All that healing comes as a result of faith. But remember, faith comes by hearing. Not hearing the word of the world, but the word of God. Anytime you detach your eyes and your ears from hearing God speak by His Spirit, you are connected to the source of demons who will speak things of flesh and carnality that will pollute your mind. And remember, everything the enemy speaks to your mind, whether it's fear, whether it's word of anger, any kind of word is to find the knowledge of Christ in the inside of you. And that's why the Bible says, pulling down every stronghold. I used to do it that whenever the thoughts and imagination come, you know what I do? I begin to rebuke them. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I'll stop at this point. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I cast you up. And I realize that the more I rebuke it, the more it floods my mind. I don't know whether I'm different to you, but the more I rebuke it, the more the thought floods my mind. They will come in mass. Until the Holy Spirit now whisper to me. It's like the Bible says, when the enemy comes like a flood, it is the Spirit of God that lifts up a standard. You cannot rebuke them all. By just saying, in Jesus' name, after you have been living with them in sins of total fornication, adultery, fear, worries, doubt, you now want to rebuke them. Somebody that's taken somebody hostage. No. You need the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. When Christ was in the wilderness, the Bible says something, two things that will easily just divert. In his own trial of the enemy flooding him with thoughts, the Bible says Satan came to tempt him. Here it is. Two things gave him victory. The first thing is written in Luke chapter 1. When you begin to look from verse 1 to 4, 4 said, And Jesus was led by who? By the Holy Spirit into the wilderness for an assignment. He was led. So Holy Spirit was standing there. But not only that, there's another thing. Every time the devil took his test and his temptation, Christ did not say, Get up behind me. It started with, It has been. He said the first time, it has been written. It has been written. The second temptation, it has been written. It was a time as a God behind me. You will serve your God, your Lord. He didn't start with that shouting on devil and telling him up. He released the word. And the word he was releasing was a word of faith. It was not an empty word. The devil can stand you, but he cannot stand the sword of faith, which is the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing the word of God. As you take more time, to study the word and to keep it in one, you get to a point whereby faith will become a sword, faith will become a shield. Can I help you, somebody? Who is holding this word and the shield? Too often we thought it is us holding this word and the shield. No, it is the Holy Spirit that lifts up the standard. So when you read the Bible, hear it right. It said, when the enemy came like what? Like a flock. Like the Spirit of the Lord will what? What standard? What standard? The word. Of it. You will see that sometimes you are down. Oh no, Lord, I have no strength to remove pray. Lord, 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 this enemy. Has. And all of a sudden, the word will kick from the inside of you. And you'll be hearing the word speaking loud. And before you know, you jump on me. I shall not die but leave. Don't proclaim the gospel of God. Who gave it to you? The Holy Spirit lift up a sword and he shielded you. But if we don't find time to study, we can become a casualty. Keep moving. Don't stop. Don't look back. Remember the Lord's way. Let us pray. Father, you have not called us unto fear, 
The journey you started with us is highly protected and ensured. You are taking us higher to a new dimension. You said you will never leave us nor forsake us. But you want us to follow you in obedience and be led by the Holy Spirit. We submit ourselves to you today. In this polluted world that we find ourselves, that you will enable the word of God and the word of faith to continue to be easily accessible to our spirit man. That we will desire to read. We will desire to study. Amen. Even when there are things that make it uncomfortable or inconvenient. Holy Spirit, prepare us to love the word of God. And not only to hear it, but to be the doer of this world. Thank you for this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. It's now time for our tithes and offerings. Um, as the envelopes are being passed around, uh, once again, uh, may, I require, may I ask that parents please cooperate with us. These envelopes are for uh, taxpayers only, um, and it is our desire for our children to be encouraged in giving as well. So, can I advise that parents, when just before we come?